Logic Pro for iPad is here. So in this video, I'm going to give you a crash course so that you can get creating in Logic really fast. Let's go. We're getting started in just a few seconds, but first a bit of housekeeping. There's timestamps down in the description if you want to jump around. You can also jump in here to Logic Pro and check out all of these lessons. There's a heap of really cool lessons that can help get you started. So after you've watched this video, I highly recommend jumping in and checking those out. Let's start with the basics. How do you get hold of Logic Pro on iPad? Well, it's available via the App Store. It's a subscription of $49.99 per year or $4.99 per month, and that's in US dollars or your local currency. And you will need an iPad with an A12 Bionic chip or better. There's a complete list down in the description or you can check it out on the screen right now. Just hit pause and make sure that your iPad is compatible. Once you've downloaded and opened Logic, you're going to be presented with this screen where you can explore all the different sound packs and the lessons. But we want to start a new project now. You can select Live Loops or Tracks Mode. We're going to tap on the Tracks button and start a new project in Track View. From here, you can select MIDI, Audio, Pattern, Drama, or Patches, Loops, and Samples. We're going to go through all of these in this video, so don't stress about these too much right now. For now, we're going to tap on the drummer to create a drummer track to get our project started. Logic Pro selects a drummer, sets all your parameters here, and if you want to just see what it sounds like, just hit play. And to stop, just hit the stop button. So we can customize this, and I'm gonna show you a bunch of ways to do that. But for now, I just wanna find a drummer that's gonna work for the type of track we're gonna create. So to change the drummer, we can tap here. We've got the modern r and B. I I actually wanna go with something more funky. So we're gonna scroll down through these drummers and scroll up, in fact, to go to funk rock. And I'm gonna go with a funk rock drummer. Let's hit the play button and see what this one sounds like. Hit stop, that sounds pretty good. So that's our first track added. We've got eight bars of drummer. We can start creating. So let's explore Logic Pro and show you how it's done. Let's talk about the browser in Logic Pro. This is this pane on the left, and this is where we can search, select, and add sounds to use in our project. To enable it, we need to tap on this button in the bottom left corner, and it's gonna pop out there. At the moment, it's set to instrument patches because we added this drummer. To go back and reset, we just tap on this button, and we're back here at the default browser view. Now, I'll give you a complete overview of the display and how to navigate around, but for now, what we can do is tap on this editor button and get rid of that editor screen. This just gives us more screen real estate to show you how we can use the browser to add tracks. Let's start by adding a virtual instrument track. So we can do that by tapping on the instrument patches button here, but take a look at this. How are we gonna find what we need? It's not like GarageBand where you've just got pictures of instruments. We need to be able to find that. And that's where your filtering comes in super handy. For instance, if we wanted a synth sound, all we need to do is tap right there on the synth button and it's gonna filter and give us all of our synth sounds. Below it gives us suggestions for other filters that we might want to add there or what we can do is tap on this button here and go to the all options where you can jump in and select from a whole bunch of different parameters. But for now, let's select a synth to add to this track. To preview any of these sounds, all we need to do is tap on this green button off to the side. So let's take a listen to these 80s wave bells. And you can tap again to stop that one. To bring this in as a sound, all we need to do is tap and drag and drop it on any of these fresh track headers. And as soon as you release, there you go. We've got a brand new MIDI track ready to play. If we want to replace that sound, all we need to do is grab our replacement sound, drag it and drop it over the top. And you'll see that it changes to the new sound. And an even easier way is to turn on replace mode by tapping on this button in the bottom left and then tapping. And every time we tap, it's going to change that sound. And we'll show you how to play this instrument in the next section. The other way we can add a brand new track is hitting the add track button here in the top left. And from here we can select MIDI or this time, why don't we try an audio track? So let's tap on audio. Now you'll notice that the audio patches has defaulted over here on the left. So we can decide on which audio patch we would like to do and use the exact same process to bring this across as we did with the MIDI patches. Now, if audio patches sounds unfamiliar, think of these as things like like your guitar amp sims and your vocal presets, things that you're going to record audio over. So for instance, if we tap the amp button here in the filter, this will give us our different amp sounds. And if we tap on the preview button, 
it gives us a demo of what that's going to sound like. Once again, to bring this in as our audio patch, we just drag it and drop it, and now we can record some guitar sound using that track. Another type of audio track is a loop, so we can add that by either going back here on the left and going into the loops or the samples. Let's jump into loops here, and now, just like in GarageBand, if you're familiar with that, we can see all of the different Apple loops that are available, and we can use all of that filtering to find the right sound. The other way we can do this is hitting the plus button and tapping on this button here, patches, loops, and samples, which takes us back to the browser where we can browse and start looking for what loop we want to add. Now, because we're making a funk track here this time if we tap on the search button here and type the word funk we can now tap on this one and that's going to create our own custom search filter so we can find only funky sounding beats to go with our track now because we've already got drums why don't we add a bass here to preview it once again tap here tap again to stop and to bring it in tap drag and then drop this on our track. And in just a few minutes, we've started building our groove. Let's move on to our next topic and close the browser for now and jump over to the right hand side and tap on the play surfaces button. Now, because we've got an audio track here, it's not showing us anything, but as soon as we tap on a track that supports play surfaces, we get the ability to select what play surface we're going to use to play this track. Now, as well as the standard keyboard you can see here, you can select other play surfaces and to change your play surface, you need to tap over here on the left and you can see you can choose from keyboard, drum pads, fretboard, chord strips, guitar strips, and you can even lock the play surface so it doesn't move around. So there's your standard keyboard, your drum pads look like this they'll make more sense when we use those with drums you've got your fretboard so you can play any sound like a guitar you've also got your chord strips which you'll be familiar with if you've used GarageBand that you can play chords just there on the surface and even guitar strips so you can play chords as if you're using a guitar with any sound you like let's however use the keyboard here to record in a virtual instrument track on this synth to do that, we come up to the top here and hit the record button and start playing in our part. And hit stop once we're done. There you go. We've now got our synth part added to our bass and our drums. To show you the drum pads, we need to add a drum track. So this time we're going to hit the plus button up the top here and we're going to go to a MIDI track. Now this time we want drums, so we're going to remove the synth there. We're going to go to drums. Let's find ourselves something that's going to have some cool hi-hats that we can play in here. What about this analog haze? That sounds like it might have some cool hi-hats. So we'll use this as the basis of our track. Now what we can do is grab this analog haze, drag it across and create a brand new track by dropping it here. And what you'll see is the play surface has magically defaulted to our drum pad. So now we can play in our drums using the drum pads rather than the keyboard for our other instruments. Once again, we'll go over navigation in more detail, but a quick tip here is we can actually use this button to the right side to drag up and to increase the size of our drum pads. So you can drag that one up or drag it back down. So if you wanna see more of the drum sounds in a drum kit, just use that handle to drag up and down. Again, let's hit record and record in our part. And to finish this section on play surfaces, let's close the play surfaces by tapping this button and close the browser so that we get a nice clean view ready to jump into our next section. Let's now talk about the recording options in Logic Pro. Now we have already recorded a couple of tracks, but you'll notice that we haven't adjusted any of our settings. And that's what we're gonna go through in this section. Let's start by looking at tempo. That's the beats per minute, the speed of your track. And we can adjust that by tapping where it has this number up the top here. We can either type it directly in there we can tap up or down here. We can drag this button up or down, or we can even tap in to tap the tempo in. And what you'll notice there is you get the tempo to a whole bunch of decimal places. That's going to be super handy for folks who in the past have used BPMs that are maybe 120.5, but haven't been able to use that in other digital audio workstations. I want this track a little faster, so let's type in 105, hit done, and our tempo is set. 
What about our key signature where well, we can tap on this button here and we can adjust our time signature and key signature. Now the key of this one is probably going to be in C minor because of the loops that we've added in there. So we'll adjust that. We can adjust the key there as well if we wanted to. And the time signature here, again, good news for folks who love weird and wacky time signatures. You can enter in pretty much any time signature you can imagine. Let's hit done and move on to our count in. So the next thing along here is your count in. You can turn this off and on by tapping on that button and if you tap and hold you'll go to your counting options so you can count in one two three or four bars or even just a quarter note or two quarter notes if that's what you're after we're going to leave that on one bar and move on to the metronome which again can be selected by tapping or tapping to turn off or you can tap and hold to go into more options it's in simple mode right now you can tap that one and go into a more complicated mode tap and hold again and you can adjust some more settings which are a little more advanced for this first look but if you want to play Play around with the metronome there's a heap of options under the hood for now let's tap it back onto simple mode and turn it on so that we have the metronome on when we're recording to the left of this panel is your transport control so you can record you can play you can stop and you can hit this button to go back to the start of your track the other thing you've probably noticed here is the cycle button this is pretty cool this is what folks that have been using GarageBand have wanted for a long time so when you tap that on it brings up this cycle and you can adjust that by tapping and dragging it and what you can do with this is loop one section of your audio this is great for recording in cycle mode if you're trying to nail a guitar solo or you just want to hear the same part and record multiple takes it's a very cool option if you don't want to use it though just tap it off and it's gone now that we're all set up, let's record another track and we'll use this deluxe classic MIDI instrument. We'll go to the bottom right as we learnt before, tap on our play surfaces and here we've actually got a double keyboard for this one which is pretty cool. So we'll hit the record button, we'll get that one bar of count in and then we'll play in our part. Let's now talk about recording external sounds, plugging in a microphone or a guitar or another audio device to record in Logic Pro. We already set up this auditorium clean sound, but let's just do it from scratch as a quick revision. So we'll tap on the plus button in the top left. Now here you can see audio and you can see that the input there is already set up. To change that, we can tap on these three dots and then we can check the format here. So for most of your instruments and microphones, you want mono, stereo if it's like a stereo synth or a keyboard, and then the channel. Now I've got my guitar plugged into channel two, so I'm gonna select input two on my Steinberg UR22C. We can then tap on input monitoring so that we can actually use that and we've got our audio patch here Which will leave as the default audio patch for now We can then hit the create button and it's going to create us a brand new track Now what we need to do is decide which of these amp sounds or which other type of sounds we want to bring in now we can again use our filters here. So let's filter in and go to just our guitars and let's just try this Brit and clean if we tap the preview that's the sound we're going to get there. So to move this over, we tap and hold and drag and drop it on our track. Now, if everything's set up and working correctly, when we strum our guitar, there you go. You can see it's coming through there and ready to rock and roll. If we want to record this track now, we'll go back to the start by hitting the start button there. We'll arm the track by tapping this R button. You can see it's ready to record and then we can hit the record button and start recording in a guitar part. Now, because I'm playing guitar here and I need a little extra time, we can use the count in to our advantage. So let's tap and hold on this and make this two bars of count in, hit record and let's get rocking. So maybe not the most mind-blowing guitar part, but the cool thing is here in Logic Pro, we can now utilize all of the options that we have in here to change that sound and make it whatever we want. To change up the sound we've just recorded, let's uh, tap that record light off. We can actually grab any of these other sounds and bring it across onto our guitar amp. So let's just maybe take a preview of this lush delay. That might sound a bit cooler, so if we grab this, drag it across onto this guitar track and release it, there you go, it says updated that track. And then we can solo, we'll talk about soloing uh, later in the video, and hit play. Already sounding a bit cooler, isn't it? Yeah, so we're going to go with that for now, and we'll adjust that when we get to the mixing phase later in the video.
let's talk about navigating around the interface because there's a lot going on here and it's easy to get overwhelmed, but it's actually a really well put together interface. The first thing I wanna do here before we show you this is to close out the browser by tapping on the bottom left and getting back to this default screen. And that's probably a good habit to get into to close things you're not using. Let's go through the entire interface section by section so you can learn where everything is. Let's start at the top left. This button here will take you back, which means it'll go out of the project, it'll save it and take you back to the main screen. Next up is the project name, aptly named Project 11. If we tap on that one, this is where you can export and share or bounce down your final mix. Moving to the right, our transport controls, the back button there, your play, pause and stop, your record and your cycle that we've discussed previously. Next up is your display section here where you can see where you are in the project. If you click around, you can see you're in bar four, beat number three there. You've got your BPM, your tempo there, your time signature and key signature, and then your count in and your metronome status. Over on the right, you've got your undo button. And just like in other programs that Apple do, if you tap and hold that, you get a redo option there if there's something to redo. You've got your help section here where you can jump into the lessons or go to Logic Pro Help. And you've got all of your options and settings up here in the top right if you want to have a fiddle with those. Over on the left, these buttons take you between your live loops mode and your tracks mode. This video is concentrating on tracks mode, but we will be looking at live loops in the future, or if you're in the future, it'll be down in the description. This is where we can go into our automation view versus our regular pane view that we're looking at here. Over here, we have our edit controls. Let's talk about those now. These editing controls tell Logic Pro what we're actually doing as we're editing our project from trimming, looping, splitting, stretching, doing our copying, and even doing multi-selecting so that we can select multiple tracks or regions at the same time. And we're covering those in details in the next section, so don't worry too much if none of that made sense. And over to the side, you've got your snap to grid settings. Recommend leaving that on auto for now while you're learning. And you've also got some additional cycle options to the right. Down into our main work area, you've got your slide out control here. So if we slide this to the left, you've got a very basic display. If you're looking at it like that and you want your additional controls, just grab that and slide it to the right. Each of our tracks have a mute, a solo, a record button, and their own volume control, as well as an icon. And then of course, the regions that are out here, which is the parts that we've recorded or that we've brought in to our Logic projects. Last, but by no means least, all of these icons along the bottom, these are the different panels that you can bring up and put away that are gonna help you create in Logic Pro. Let's start with the browser over here on the left. This is all of your audio files, all of your instrument patches, all of your plugins that you wanna have access to, and you can Come in here and navigate around and drag those onto your tracks in a whole bunch of ways that we'll show you in this video. Next up, you have your inspector. The inspector is going to change based on which track is selected. This is where you manage things like quantization, your icons, your track colors, a whole bunch of stuff there. And you can even change between region and track view by tapping on the button up there in the top left. Next up, we have this one. Let's put that one away. This is our fader. So this is like an extended version of what we have here. So with your fader up, you can actually use a nice long fader. You can see at the top there, It'll give you the actual readout, which is very, very handy. You can also adjust your panning, your mute, your solo, your recording, and really handy is up the top here, we can check the input and the output for each track. So if we're recording things like our guitar before, that gives us a really good view of exactly where it's being input from. Let's put that one away and come down to the bottom. This is the editor's window. So this, again, is going to vary depending on which track you have selected. This is where you do your audio editing your MIDI note editing and any other editing within your sampler or in Alchemy or a whole bunch of other things. Next up is the plugins. Let's open the plugins and here you've got your plugin tiles. So this is where you can have a quick and easy access to all the plugins on the track. You've also got access to your sends and your outputs if you're using those and you can actually double tap on these and bring up a larger version of all of these plugins so you can actually see exactly what's going on. Some things like the compressor has a whole bunch of other options that you have there you can turn plugins on and off you can add them you can remove them all of your plugin related goodness is in the plugin pane next up is our mixer this is where all the action happens so your mixer here you can change your mixer here you can add in different plugins and set it up however you like you can go to mixer mode you can jump in here and use your faders you've got mutes and solos you can do automation you can add plugins there's a heap you can do in the mixer we'll touch on it in the section coming up
And last but definitely not least is over here on the right is your play surfaces. So as we've discussed before, when you're using a track that has something that we can play, you can use your play surfaces and you can adjust it using your button there to the different modes and recording your virtual instruments. Oh, one final thing about navigating you really need to know and that's your zooming. So if you've got your two fingers, you can actually spread your fingers out to zoom in or you can pinch to zoom back out. And not only can you zoom horizontally, but if you do it vertically, you can get a whole lot more screen real estate by doing that. So it just makes it really great to be able to move around and get a good view of your project, which is going to be important for our next section which is editing. Yes, let's start editing our project here in Logic Pro. Now your editing options across the top here will vary based on the type of track that you're using. So I'm going to show you the basic things that we can do in here and then we'll jump into an audio track and a MIDI track and show you some more specific stuff too. By default we're going to be in trim mode in our editing. So this means that when we tap on a region we can grab these handles and move them side to side. Now if you tap and hold for a while it's going to zoom in and give you some more precise control over exactly where you do that trimming so that's a cool thing to do there the next option we have here is the loop option so this is where we can loop out a track this is really cool for instance when we did this track here we only did four bars of it if we grab this end handle and drag it out then we can actually create eight bars by using the loop option. What about the split option? Well, that's next. We'll tap on the split option here. Say we wanted to split this guitar part into two sections to do maybe some different processing. We tap on that one. We move this little playhead across and you can see our little scissor icon. We grab the scissors and we pull down and look at that. We've changed one region into two different regions there that we can use. And finally, we have our stretch mode, which is pretty cool. We won't use it much in this process. Project. But this is great if you say import something at a different BPM and you want to stretch it out to fit something. I'll show you a quick demo on this one here. If we say wanted to stretch this one, we've got the stretch enabled, we can drag that out and this is now going to play this guitar funk bass part at half the speed. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Now, does it work in this project? No, not at all. But you can see the power of this, that we can actually stretch out parts and not only our MIDI, but our audio tracks to fit in with whatever the rest of our project is doing. Let's look at some specific MIDI editing tools here. So when you have a virtual instrument like this one and you want to edit the performance, all we need to do is tap on the editors window down the bottom here, and you can see this will open up your piano roll editor. And from here, we can actually do a bunch of things to edit the performance in our virtual track. Let's first solo this track and take a listen to what it sounds like right now. Cool. So what we can do is we can actually use our custom MIDI tools in here to do some of the same sort of things, but there's some differences. Let's again use our zoom and our adjustment here with our two fingers to get a better look at this track here. The trim mode does exactly the same thing as it does in the other section. So if we wanted to say line these notes up a little better, we can just grab them and drag them. If we want to drag the end, we can grab the handle and just move and adjust the length of our notes too. The next section here, this is our pencil mode. So this is where if we wanted to draw in a new note, we can do that and we can and we can add a new part to that. Just play that one. Very cool. Now, if we wanted to actually use the brush tool here, this is probably my least favorite because it doesn't do a lot of useful things, but you can actually brush in notes like that. Now, it's not great for this, but it's great for things like automation, which once you start delving in to the more advanced stuff in Logic Pro, you're going to be able to find some cool things to do. Let's hit the undo button. Remember, that's up the top here to get rid of that. And then we've got the final mode here, the velocity. So if we tap on an item here, we can actually adjust its velocity. If we jump into here, we can actually drag up and down and adjust the velocity of each note. So that's another cool option that we have here in the MIDI note editor. And the final one here is a multi-select. So if you want to select multiple notes and then impact all of them, you can use your multi-select button. Once we're happy with the MIDI editing, we can tap on the editors button again to drop that down and we'll unsolo that track.
We also have an editor mode for our audio. So let's tap on an audio track and hit the editors button down below. We've got some very similar controls here. You've got trim as the first one, which allows us to trim at either the front or the end of that region. You've got the loop mode here. So if we zoom out a little bit, again, grab your two fingers and pinch to zoom like that. We can say loop this and make it go across these first two sections. So we've got two two bar sections for the first four bars there. You've got a split mode here, which works the same as it did in the main section we can actually grab that pull it down to split it and you have the stretch mode as well these last couple here you've got the multi select one that we showed before and you've got a copy tool here as well so the copy tool allows you to grab uh, a section and then drag it across and it's actually going to create a copy of that one they're more advanced stuff that you won't use as much so you can see you've got a heap of editing tools here ready to go in logic pro and one final thing that you can do here is actually tap and then tap again and you get a bunch of options here so these are more advanced things to do with takes and your cycle options you can move you can trim you can bounce and join there's a bunch of options in there so once you get to a more advanced level and you start playing around with this you'll use those options in here for both types of tracks to do a whole bunch more in logic pro next up let's talk about plugins logic pro ships with a bunch of really cool plugins and we're going to just scratch the surface of them here so that you know how to get to them and start using them so your plugins are down the bottom here if we tap on this button here you can see that for each different track every time you select a different track you're going to get all the different plugins down below so let's take a look at the plugins that are on this guitar we've got a noise gate a squash the heavenly chorus we've got an amp designer a compressor tape delay and if we scroll across at the bottom there you can see we've got the eq there as well to add a new plugin all we need to do is tap on this add button and we can select from your recent ones there all of the logic pro plugins of which there are a heap and you can experiment with all of those as well as all your audio units so if you've got external plugins you've downloaded for ipad or iphone that are compatible auv3 compatible you can utilize them so for instance if we wanted to add a little bit of distortion to this one we can go to distortion and let's just grab the overdrive and throw that plugin on here that's added now to this chain on this guitar to adjust your plugins, you can either adjust the knobs right here on the plugin tiles, or if you double tap on any of your plugins, you get a complete view of all of the settings you have there. Now, if you want this to be full screen, you can tap on this button over here on the top right, or you can actually tap and drag and create your own custom layout so that you can adjust your plugins while seeing the rest of your project. You'll also notice that you can go between your different plugins in this full view mode by tapping on these buttons along the bottom. Let's solo this guitar and then we'll adjust the plugin settings here for this overdrive to see if it's going to work. There you go. I think that's sounding a little better with a little more drive on there. So really easy to start adjusting your plugins here in Logic Pro. If you want to replace a plugin, you can tap and hold on the particular plugin and hit the replace button. And then you can just select a different plugin directly from your list. If you want to remove it entirely, tap and hold on that plugin and hit the remove button. And that's going to remove that plugin completely from your plugin chain. You can also view and adjust your plugins using the mixer view. So if we tap the mixer here and tap this one to get rid of our plugins, if you drag up on the top right here, you'll see it will reveal all of this. If you're in mixer mode here, you might need to go to setup mode to adjust these. If we tap on one of these, we can now come in here and remove, copy, or replace, and we can even show details here. So we can jump in and adjust your plugins right here in your mixer. Speaking of the mixer, let's dive in and look at the mixer in more detail. So as we've shown previously, to access your mixer, tap on the mixer icon down below. Now you can even flip your device over vertically to get even more access to longer faders, which is a pretty cool option there. But what I like to do is tap in the top right here and have this full screen view so I can see everything going on with my tracks. Now there's two basic modes for your mixer. There's the setup mode and the mixer mode. So if you're in setup mode, this is where you're going to set up your sends and receives, change your plugin details and your order of your plugins and do all of that maintenance. And then once you're ready to get into the artistic side of mixing, you can actually hit the mix mode and you can jump over here and start adjusting things. Let's jump back into the setup mode by tapping on the plus button there and show you what we can do here with our mixer. So if we wanted to add an effect to any one of our mixer channels here, we can simply select the channel that we 
want to add to, and then hit this plus button here and select from any one of these. So let's throw the limiter on this one. There you go, we've got a limiter on there. If we want to adjust it, we tap show details and we can adjust this. We can increase the gain, increase, change the release, do whatever we want to do there. If we wanted to, to go back, just hit the X button and we're back to our mixer view. Once again, if we want to make it bigger, we just drag up like that. Removing effects is super simple too. So we can just remove this one by tapping and hitting remove. So you can adjust the different effects that are on your different channels by tapping there. If we want to replace an effect, we simply need to tap there and hit the replace button. And then we can select a brand new effect and throw that one on over the top. To view the details of an effect, all we need to do is tap on one of the plugins here, hit the show details button, and we can adjust it here. You might've also noticed that there's this button here. This is where we can bypass any of our effects or hit that power button to turn the effect back on as well. Let's now jump back to the mix mode here. And this is where we do all of the heavy lifting of our mixing. We can adjust our individual volumes. We can adjust our panning between the left and the right and the center. We can set automation here as well. You can mute and solo each individual track. There's a heap you can do here and a lot of advanced things that the mixer does that we'll definitely be covering in future videos. But for now, let's just give this track a little bit of a mix here in the mixer. In this final section, I'm going to show you all the cool things here in Logic Pro that we didn't have time to cover in this video, but you may want to check out in your own time. Logic Pro has an amazing step sequencer built right in where you can use patterns to create amazing beats using built-in kits or even your own custom sounds. It's super cool, and if you want to learn more about it, check out the lesson available right here in Logic Pro. As well as adding your samples and loops directly to your project, you can also drag them onto a track header and use sample alchemy quick sampler or drum machine designer again these are very detailed ways to create amazing sounds and will be covered in future videos here on the channel so make sure you're subscribed and come back and see what they're all about and one of the newest additions to Logic Pro here on iPad is Beat Breaker, which you can use this lesson to learn all about. There's so much you can do with Beat Breaker. It is such a cool thing to play around with. I'm going to let you start exploring, but again, come back to the channel because we'll be playing with this in the very near future. I hope this introduction to Logic Pro on iPad has helped you get up and running super quickly so that you can start creating your best music using Logic Pro. Once again, don't forget to check out all the links down in the description. We've got a bunch of other Logic Pro videos right here on the channel, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.